Hi, this is Andrew from Front Range CNC. Today we're going to talk about rack and pinion and ball screw, um, where you commonly see them used, uh, some information in regards to how they talk with different controller setups and what applications might be best for one versus the other. So let's get started. First, uh, we need to look at what is rack and pinion and ball screw and, and why is that such a, uh, a big thing among CNC routers. So on larger industrial style machines, um, you know, four feet by eight feet and larger, you start to see the two major uh, motion components are either a rack and pinion setup or a ball screw setup. Um, almost all machines have got a ball screw on the Z axis, which is typically uh, rather short. And then depending on the length of the machine, you will see either a rack and pinion or a ball screw on the Y or the X axis, uh, depending on the style of the machine. A ball screw setup is one where you've got a um, recirculating piece that's actually moving on a set screw. And depending on the length of that screw, it is either affixed at both ends or potentially the screw itself is actually um, rotating. Typically, um, if the machine is eight feet or under, you can start to rotate the screw itself and you won't encounter a tremendous amount of um, whipping. If the screw is 10 feet and longer, you typically will see the screw affixed on both ends and the motor is actually going to travel on that screw and that's what will provide your motion. A rack and pinion setup is typically, um, you'll see a pinion which has got teeth on it and those teeth are going to go in between the actual rack itself and that's what will uh, dictate your motion. Um, a rack and pinion can be either a straight rack or a helical setup. Uh, a straight setup is the teeth are dead straight on and a helical setup is your teeth are at an angle there. Um, typically a helical setup is quieter um, and it's, it's a little more expensive than the straight setup, but you do still see that uh, in some smaller applications. Um, people ask uh, frequently, what is better, rack and pinion or ball screw? Um, and so we offer both setups, it's the same cost. And so um, if there was uh, an application that, you know, we felt a ball screw would be better, then, you know, we would suggest that. And if there was an application that we thought a rack and pinion would be better, we would suggest that. So, you know, for us, it's the same cost. We don't have any um, incentive to try to push you into one versus the other. Uh, they're, they're just different. So to say that um, ball screw is better than rack and pinion and vice versa is not, is not you know, entirely uh, fair to how those setups are. Um, there are advantages to both. Um, a rack and pinion setup typically is um, one of the only ways you can get a long travel distance. So anytime you see, you know, 10 feet's about the max you'll get for most ball screw setups, even when they're both affixed. Um, so anything larger than 10 feet is almost always a rack and pinion setup. Um, the advantage of rack and pinion is it's typically faster. Uh, and so this may not always be seen in the actual cutting motion, simply because you're not going to be moving at you know, 2,000 inches per minute while you're cutting uh, plywood or plastic or anything like that. But um, if you are a cabinet shop or really any uh, application where you are changing tools fairly frequently um, or you've got, you know, long distances, you can typically uh, go much faster on a rack and pinion setup. Um, that is one main advantage of rack and pinion. Um, ball screw has its advantages also primarily when it comes to backlash. Um, so backlash is a uh, mechanical um, thing we see where essentially um, the, the mechanical pieces wear on the actual rack and pinion themselves. And so uh, typically this will not happen um, right away on any machine, uh, but as that machine is moving, you will start to have this uh, physical thing called backlash. And essentially think about it as, you know, as, as your rack is stationary and you have your pinion coming in between, if there's too much space here, then you'll start to introduce this um, element of backlash. And the way you'll see it is, um, the easiest way is if you cut a, a square, typically when you're changing direction, the machine is off by, let's say, 
X amount of thousandths of, of whatever backlash you're introducing. And so, um, you know, at first glance, this would seem that rack and pinion is the way to go, is a, is a far inferior to ball screw. Um, ball screw does not have backlash. Um, and if, it, if, it, if you see any bit introduced, it's such a small amount that it's not, you know, even measurable compared to a rack and pinion. Um, but an important part is, you know, of, of almost all industrial controllers now have got backlash compensation already in the controller. And so um, in the example, if you do have a rack and pinion machine, you know, let's say you are doing cabinets and you're cutting 20 sheets a day and you want the machine moving as quick as you can. Um, you know, rack and pinion really is the absolutely the best way to go for that example. Maybe you have got a 10 foot table, maybe even a 12 foot table, depending on your material size. Um, and you can go faster with the rack and pinion. Uh, you can keep that rack out of the way, so to say, so that you have essentially have it be inverted here. So you don't have stuff gumming up in there. Um, when you do start to see backlash, um, it's a very simple adjustment. The controllers are all industrial. They're smart enough to basically take that two thousands, three thousands, one thousands, whatever that backlash amount is, and compensate it out of the actual um, build and, and mechanical process. So, um, you know, it, it's, it doesn't need to be a, a scary thing. Um, you know, if you do encounter that, there's lots of high-end aerospace machines that are using a rack and pinion on the X and the Y, um, and, and, and they're doing just fine. And, and so, it's, it's not something that has to be incredibly uh, intimidating. You know, there are applications where a, a ball screw would be a better choice. Um, you know, typically if you're cutting material that is, uh, you know, one, not going to be sanded, is not going to, um, you, you, can't, you can't go back and, and, uh, and uh, hide an edge or so on. So let's say it's uh, plastic parts or let's say you're cutting um, some certain types of aluminum where you are, uh, your, your edges are going together, but, but they'll be exposed. And so, you know, th there are applications where a ball screw is a good choice. Um, the ball screw would also be a great choice if you did not need speed. If you were the kind of shop that was doing, uh, you know, less parts every week or every month, um, maybe you are doing prototyping instead of production then at that point, you know, ball screw might be a really good choice for you. You'll be able to minimize some of that long-term uh, maintenance, um, but you will give up um, that potential for speed that you would get with the rack and pinion setup. Um, adjusting that backlash, you know, in the future on a rack and pinion, you, you don't need a tech to come out. You don't need anything fancy to do that. You can literally have a dial indicator and check everything, and that can really show you um, what that backlash is. And, you know, the, the other thing that's really interesting is in these size of machines, depending on what controller you're using, typically um, ball screws need to have uh, what's called uh, lead screw compensation done. And essentially, if you can imagine, um, if your table's 10 feet, every, you know, two to five inches, you are actually uh, measuring with a laser the distance and then inputting into a table what the physical distance is versus what the uh, programmed or what the controller thinks. And so um, in that case, th there is still a need on a ball screw machine for this extra step of this lead screw compensation. Um, you know, there, there are machines in this, um, say, sixty dollars to $80,000 price range that are using ball screws that um, are not using controllers that even have a lead screw compensation um, built into the controller. And so it, it's one of these things where um, it seems a lot more intimidating than it is, but then you start to go down the rabbit hole and you start to realize that maybe just because it has ball screw doesn't mean it's a better machine or a better um, design than a rack and pinion. Um, there, there are some extra steps that need to be done on a ball screw machine for that to really be, um, you know, a really accurate style of um, router. Um, so, you know, a good question as you go through your process, as you could say, um, you know, I know the machine's a ball screw. What, what is your, what, what distance are you lasering, or lasering the machine? Um, you know, and this is after going on a large mill that, that's basically milling the frames. And then from there, you know, what is your, what is, what is the laser uh, compensation table look like? 
Um, and if a lot of times, you know, companies can say, well, our frames are so good, we don't need to, to laser them. But um, there, there's, there's just no way that your frame is, is going to be just dead perfect. Um, even on an aerospace style large mill, you'll still need to laser that machine. And so that would be a good question to ask. Um, you know, another question is you might ask, um, you know, based on what I'm cutting, what, what would be a better solution? Uh, you know, like I said, we offer both at, at Front Range CNC. So if we talk to you and it seems like a, a ball screw is a better choice, we're happy to, to do that and do the compensation table. But if we think a rack and pinion is a better option for you, then, then you know, that, that's a fine option as well. So again, you know, I hope the key takeaway in, in the ball screw versus rack and pinion uh, talk, at least in 2023, using industrial controllers, you know, the, the best takeaway I can give you is there, there, there's not, one is not better than the other. It's really not fair to say that. They're just different. Um, and they're each tuned for certain applications. Um, and, you know, again, we offer both options. It's the same price. So, you know, depending on what you're doing, we're happy to um, make a suggestion and, 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 and go either way and support um, either setup. If you do have any questions, feel free to give us a call or uh, send us an email. We'd be happy to kind of answer some questions maybe you have as you go through your own sales process and so on. And if there's any terminology that we've used in the video or maybe that um, you're seeing online somewhere, even on our own site, you know, feel free to reach out and we'd be happy to um, elaborate and explain. All right, thank you.